Jen friends, I'm Major Garavari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. If the Pakistani government, which I know they're not because they are equally radical, the government is equally radical, the government is in many ways is more radical than the citizens or followers and suddenly he's a small time politician. That is what is happening in Pakistan. The state does not control the mosque. The mosque controls the state. Jen friends, I'm Major Garavari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. You know, uh, Chandrayaan 3, touch wood, all is going very well. And yesterday, Vikram Lander separated successfully from Chandrayaan 3. It is now approximately some hundred plus kilometers away from the surface of the moon, but it is expected to take five more days. That is what the scientists are saying. Five more days for it to land successfully on the south pole of the moon and if that happens ladies and gentlemen i hope it will touch wood if that happens india will become the first country in the world to achieve this feat of having landed a mission on the south pole of the moon now if india lands it not on the south pole but elsewhere on the moon it would have become the fourth country in the world to have done so successfully after china after us and after russia so a big shout out to all our heroes in isro you're doing all the hard work you're doing all the brain work, the physical work, you're doing all the planning, but 1.4 billion Indians stand behind you solidly and proudly. We're with you and you are our heroes. So ladies and gentlemen, this was the good news for bad news. Let me take you to Pakistan. The Pakistani embassy in Washington DC in the United States of America has written to a consulate, its consulate in Los Angeles. And this is regarding Captain Tahavur Hossein Rana. Now, who is Tahavur Hussain Rana? Captain Tahavur Hussain Rana is a former Pakistani army officer who left the Pakistani army and became a part of the dreaded organization called the lashkar e -Tayyaba. So, I have always been saying this and Pakistanis on television channels really, really object to this. But the fact of the matter is, you do not know where the Pakistani army ends and where the terrorists start or where the terrorists end and the Pakistani army starts. They are mixed up, absolutely mixed up in cahoots with each other and they're the same thing. Pakistani army, terrorist, terrorist, Pakistani army. I mean, they're pretty much the same thing. Now, this guy was a Pakistani army officer, Captain Tahavur Hussain Rana, and he is now being extradited. This is what Mr. Amit Shah, Honorable Home Minister of India said in parliament. He said in parliament that uh, Tahavur Hussain Rana will face judicial action in India and we are extraditing him. Now, this is for the first time that a US court, ladies and gentlemen, this is important, a US court has said, we agree to everything, all the evidences that India has presented. We think, and we are of the opinion, they are rock solid, uh, Rana is guilty. Now, there are people who tried to stop this extradition. Now, I'll read out the exact thing to you, so that we are on the same page here, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, India has accessed Pakistan's internal communication dated August 14, 2023, seeking information on the possible extradition of Tahavur Hussain Rana, the Pakistan embassy has been informed that the habeas corpus appeal by Rana's legal team challenging the US district court decision to extradite into India has been rejected. So, Rana's lawyers, funded by the Pakistani deep state, of course, needless to say, were challenging the extradition to India. But now the US court has struck away that object. He says, your objection to his extradition is nonsense, get out. And this is not the first time somebody has told the Pakistanis to get out, but it has been done once more. And uh, Captain Tahavur Hussain Rana of the Pakistan Army will be hosted in India. We look forward to welcoming you, sir. Welcome to our country. Our police is known for his hospitality and we hope they give you the VIP treatment, right? Now, why is Pakistan concerned? Why is the Pakistani uh, embassy in Washington DC telling its Los Angeles uh, consulate to find out about the facts of the case. What has happened? Why are they doing this? Because they know that the lashkar e -Tayyabha, the lashkar e -Tayyabha is all about the Pakistani establishment. It is run by the Pakistan army. It is run by the ISI. It has retired officers who help Hafiz Saeed run the lashkar e -Tayyabha and his operations inside India. And when Captain Tahavur Hussain Rana of the Pakistan Army lands up in India. He's going to sing like a canary. Trust you me, he's going to sing like a canary. He's going to sing in front of the media. He's going to sing in front of the judges. He's going to sing. And this is what the Pakistani deep state is afraid of. They're afraid of this. 
they everybody is going to get exposed and you know what india is going to do india will ensure that pakistan goes back into the fatf for 5 years the grey list just wait if india gets a hook and india is already looking for a hook the day india gets that hook pakistan is back in the fatf grey list because that is where they should be that is their rightful place in fact pakistan should be taken out of the united nations and put in the fatf grey list permanently for the next 50 years or however long pakistan lasts they should be in the fatf grey list or league blacklist that is where they belong and this is exactly what is india is going to do take it from me today save this video right now uh, we have another news that uh, more than 100 people have been arrested and this is what you know uh, bbc says uh, al jazeera is saying 600 somebody is saying xyz but the fact of the matter is uh, according to pakistani social media more than eight churches i think eight plus churches have been burnt or destroyed in Pakistan, in Jalamala, and uh, hundreds upon hundreds, some say thousands, but I don't think the thousand figure is correct because there aren't very many Christians left in Pakistan, but hundreds have actually fled their homes. Some have locked themselves inside their homes. They don't know what to do. They are terror stricken and uh, Islamic, radical Islamic mobs are converging. They're trying to kill them because that is what the Malvis have told them that, you know, the Quran has been insulted. There has been a case of blasphemy and uh, it's, it's very simple, yeah. If you kill a couple of Christians, you will go to heaven and you'll get those 72 hoods. That's pretty much it. And that is what every Pakistani worth his salt wants in life. He wants to die and go up and get those hoods. That's it. So that is, that is why all this is happening, you know. This, this fakery about some pages were found outside the house of a Christian. Why in God's name would a, a, a Christian in Pakistan, a Christian in Pakistan do this? Why in God's name would he do that? He wouldn't do it simply because he's so scared. He's been scared all his life. He was scared the day he was born. You're rampaging Islamic mobs outside his house. You're rampaging Muslim mobs outside his house saying that convert or die, convert or die. This is what he hears every day. You think this man would have the guts to do anything like this? Even if he has the intent, would he have the guts to do something like this? This is all fakery. This is all pressure to convert the remaining Christians into Muslims. This is what the Pakistani state has been doing all along. And this is also a ploy to sort of, you know, either turn the turn the uh, churches into mosques or steal their property and build shopping malls. This is what Pakistanis are experts at. So that is uh, the first part. Second part is the Pakistani state, you know, we have arrested 100 this, 500 this, 1000 this, 600 this, all this is nonsense. You know, all these arrests in the past, ladies and gentlemen, it has never had any effect. Because the sections under which they will be, uh, you know, booked or arrested will be bailable sections. They'll be out on bail in 24 hours. Some radical Islamist religious organization is going to post bail for them. And once it posts bail, everything is done. Everything is over. They'll get out. They'll kill more Hindus. They'll kill more Sikhs. They'll kill more Christians. That's it. That's pretty much it. Nothing else to it. Now, if they actually want to address this problem, if the Pakistani government, which I know they are not because they are equally radical. The government is equally radical. The government is in many ways is more radical than the citizens. And what it cannot do directly, it gets its brainless pirana like citizens to do. These madrasa guys, they get them to do it. Now, what is their government's main aim? Yeah. Their government's main aim, they declared it, uh, it, it is now the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, right? So according to the government, everybody should be a Muslim in Pakistan. There is no hope, no scope for a non-Muslim in Pakistan. They keep on quoting that fake speech of Muhammad Ali Jannah, absolutely fake, absolutely not well meant, absolutely hypocritical, that you're free to go, you're free to go to your churches and your mosques and your temples and it has nothing to do with the business of the state. A bigger lie has not been spoken in the last hundred years. A bigger lie. Right? Now, what the state cannot do, it gets its citizens to do and just say that, you know, these are radical elements. But the fact of the matter is, if the state wants to control this, it must first arrest those Malvis because the Malvis are the root of all evil in Pakistan. They're like the mafia, Malvi mafia in Pakistan, right? These are the people who get the loudspeakers out and say, come on and, you know, you'll go to heaven and you'll get those 72 and if, if you're a good boy, you you... I, I, I don't know, yeah, you might even get 144 or whatever. I don't know what calculation they have, but just, just do it and come on and kill everybody and kill all the infidels. That is what they keep us. Unless you put those Malvis in prison for life or you hang them 
and tell all the other Malvis that behave yourself, otherwise we are coming after you. It's never going to happen. It is never going to happen. Pakistan has already lost the battle to the Malvi. The Malvi rules Pakistan. You know, anybody who collects money, you know, anybody who collects money, he can make a masjid and he can make a Malvi and all he needs is one loudspeaker, that's it. He's got hundreds of followers and suddenly he's a small time politician. That is what is happening in Pakistan. The state does not control the mosque. The mosque controls the state. In another news from Pakistan, the caretaker cabinet of uh, Anwarul Haq Kakad. Kakad is now the caretaker prime minister of Pakistan. Mashal Malik, the wife of Yasin Malik, the terrorist who is in jail. And I hope they hang him. She has been appointed as a special assistant to the prime minister on human rights. I never knew Pakistan had a human rights portfolio. I mean, if there is one country that should not speak about human rights is Pakistan. At least, at least the Taliban are upfront about it. You know, that is why you can, you can actually sit down with the Taliban and talk business with them. At least they are honest about it. They will tell you on your face, you know, we hate you. This is the Islamic Emirate. Non-Muslims are not welcome. They, they are blunt, they are truthful. There is a purity in their hatred. In Pakistan, that is not the case. Lahoris will smile, they'll lie, they'll cheat, they'll twist facts. In the end, they are exactly like the Taliban, but not so straightforward. That is the problem. Now, so what has happened is that Mashal Malik, wife of terrorist Yasin Malik, has been appointed a special advisor or assistant to their prime minister on human rights. Pakistan has not been able to do anything for the people of Pakistan occupied Kashmir except for calling the place Azad Kashmir as if if you name the place Azad Kashmir it is supposed to build roads it is supposed to build schools and hospitals and somehow all the schools and hospitals just come up because it is called Azad. What fraud but this is exactly what they've done they were able to do nothing when India abrogated 370 and 35A. Pakistan did nothing now what Pakistan because people are saying what happened to Kashmir. Why are you not doing anything about Kashmir? So, that, oh, you know that, that terrorist who is a Pakistani supporter, that uh, terrorist from Kashmir, Yasin Malik. Yeah, that terrorist, we have honored his wife. Now the people of Pakistan, oh, you have honored a terrorist. Wow, Wallah Habibi, this is so good. You are honoring terrorists. Now, Kakar has suddenly become famous because of this. Kakar, who nobody knew till day before yesterday, has suddenly become very popular and famous because he has honored a terrorist by naming his wife as a special advisor to the Prime Minister on human rights. Just imagine, the woman whose husband has killed innocent people is now going to be a spokesperson of human That is why Christians are getting killed. That is why Hindu girls are getting kidnapped and uh, converted. Because you have such people, you have terrorist family members, you know, taking care of human rights in Pakistan. This is why it's happening. You have such clowns there, clowns like Mashal Malik and this Kakar fellow. Right? So, this is what is happening in Pakistan. And the last news I'll tell you today, very interesting ladies and gentlemen, is Sweden says that a terrorist attack is imminent. Now, they've raised the threat perception level and they're saying that any time a terror attack can happen in Sweden. It was going to be there anyway. I mean, you have desecrated the Quran so many times, there will be a, uh, you know, there will be a backlash. But I just want to tell the government of Sweden, also Denmark, also France, these three countries, you cannot have this or you cannot have a terror attack without internal support. It's not possible. 2611 in India happened. Uh, there were people who supported 2611. I mean, you need people to recce for you. David Coleman Hidley did that recce. He had contacts here. 1993 bomb blasts. ISI carried out those bomb blasts in India, 1993. Who was their man who was giving them... Uh, you know, local support and who was actually carrying explosives and placing them, Daud Ibrahim. So you look at any major terror attack, I'm not talking about small little terror attacks where you shoot a couple of guys in the market and disappear. No, no, I'm talking about major planned terror attacks. They cannot happen without some sort of administration help, administrative help, I beg your pardon, administrative help uh, on the ground. You need guides, you need people to tell you where to procure what, you need a safe house from where you can sleep. You can't just check into a hotel. You need a safe house where you're going to sleep. You are going to rest. You're going to plan. You're going to gather. You're going to have meetings. Everything you need, please. Who, who will give you that place? 
you need a place. This is why local support is required and I would request the government of France, government of Sweden and the government of Denmark to get your internal intelligence in place and figure out who are the people who have got radical Islamist tendencies. Mark them, isolate them, call them for questioning and you will find that without their help, there can be no terror attack in Sweden, Denmark or France. Be aware, be smart. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, press the like button, subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon. Jai Hind, Vande Matram, Bharat Mata Ki Jai.